when the waves start coming up when he's walking out there, he starts to panic. And as that happens, he starts to sink. And he says to Jesus, save me. And so Jesus reaches out and saves him. And so that's kind of our story about just, there's a lot of heavy things, but if you look to Jesus and all the people who love you and love God, you're going to be great. And Jesus said, Come. Then Peter got out of the boat and was walking on the water toward Jesus. But when Peter saw the strong wind, he became frightened, and he began to sink. He shouted, Lord, rescue me. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him, saying, You man of weak faith, why did you begin to have doubts? When they got into the boat, the wind settled down. Then those in the boat worshiped Jesus and said, you must be God's son. 80 out of 100 people, at some point, as we make our way through life, will struggle with mental health. I want you to look around. Because see, we have this habit of saying it's about them. It's about the younger generation. It's about we other. But this is our story. But the younger generations, these are my kids' generations in particular, they are more willing and more open to talk about mental health than any other previous generations in the past. In the past, previous generations have considered talking about mental health a sign of weakness, a sign of they're not, you're not able to pull yourself up by, the, by those bootstraps, those metaphorical bootstraps that they talk about. And these younger generations are teaching us that we are healthier and better for it when we destigmatize and we normalize talking about mental health. And rather than stuffing it and ignoring what's happening in our lives, this really is a gift to, the, to our, our generations. The freedom to say, life is not perfect. Right now, I'm struggling. So I do want to just pause and thank the younger generations for helping us destigmatize mental health. So what would Jesus say about mental health? All of these things that we have talked about, that, that we think about with mental health and, and, and disorders, they existed in Jesus' day too. They just weren't named. There were people who experienced war and violence, and they too experienced PTSD. There were people who had deep depression and anxiety. People struggled with thoughts of self-harm. Think about two of the leading figures in faith, Moses and Elijah. They both prayed to God to die. Think about the story of Job. One bad thing after another. It was hard to even imagine how he was coping with life. And if you remember at one time, someone came, a friend came and sat beside him. And their presence alone was what he needed to get through. And he says to them in the midst of the storm, don't be afraid. See, this isn't a story teaching us about boating. It's a story teaching us about life. It's a story teaching us and reminding us that when we are in the midst of storms in our lives, Jesus comes to you and comes to me. And what does he do? Even when the winds are still crazy in the midst of the storm, as Simon Peter comes to him, he keeps his eyes fixed on Jesus. And Jesus reminds him, I am 
with you. Have a little talk with Jesus and with your friends and with your counselor. And if you need to go to the doctor and get medication and normalize, destigmatize our brain and our need for mental health and wellness. And do not leave this place without knowing this. You are God's beloved. And there is nothing you can do about it. Amen.